Hello, welcome to theCUBE's coverage here. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE here in Seattle at the headquarters of AWS. This is the Reant building. Dilip is here. He's the head of Q for business and environment. other things. Good to see you again. Oh. Thanks for coming on theCUBE here in your home turf. Yeah, thank you for having me. So um, Q for business, you got some news, um, pre-reInvent. What's the news? Yeah, so one of the things that we uh, previewed in, um, in July at the New York Summit was uh, App Studio. You know, we have low code, we have pro code, there's this middle category of low code tools, and generally what tends to happen is that line of businesses have a lot of particular yeah. needs for very peculiar needs for applications that they need to get built. Uh, but it turns out that centralized IT and engineering is usually backlogged mm -hmm. on a whole lot of things that they need to do. And so most of the things that line of businesses need tend to end up falling below the line, uh, which impacts productivity. So App Studio was introduced as a way for how do you allow people who have some amount of coding skills, but not a lot, yeah. to be able to get reasonably productive and not just improve productivity for themselves, but also to be able to do it for their own team or their organization. So using very simple generative AI prompts to be able to build websites that has a reasonable amount of punch, but it also adheres to all the security and the privacy and practices that IT administrators are looking for so that we don't have shadow IT yeah. uh, perpetrated to the organization. You know, I, in New York, that was a moment where you saw the, the light bulb go off in everyone's head and they say, hmm, wow. And I was just talking to Swami and I talked to Matt Garman about it a little bit, but Swami really hit, hit that point home was the productivity gain now with in the business lines is where you're seeing um, the step function in, in value and, and the labor and the cloud initially was developers, right? So, exactly. Okay, developers got that too with Cube. Cube's very popular with, on Cube for developer. Yes. And now on the business side, you're seeing the productivity of that labor. So the 10X engineer was cloud, that still continues to be the case. And now we're seeing productivity like a 10X business person. So the process and the domain expertise in the business side is being impacted by Q for business because the workflows impact their jobs. So, you know, you don't, don't, don't want to write SQL code? Well, maybe the AI could help. So this is where the workflows come in. So can you explain, it's super exciting area, and by the way, agents are coming too, right there yes. too. So take us through where you are on the progress bar of Q for business to impact you know, the worker who's sitting there saying, well, I, don't, I can actually do a little bit of the heavy lifting myself here, yeah. and I'll get engineers involved, I'll write the query, or I'll do this. So where is that, where is that going? Where so when you think about Q for Business, we think about it in three phases, right? Yeah. One is uh, organizations have this treasure trove of data. Yeah. They're all usually in silos, you know, different people have access to different things. You mentioned SQL. Yeah. SQL used to be the, you used to either have to write SQL queries against databases if you knew it, or you <laughs> had to go to a BI engineer to be able to get yeah. the level of productivity yeah. you needed. And that was then available in BI tools. Yeah. Uh, what's happening is that, you know, you don't come into work on Monday and say, that, well, today's the day I want to work on getting information from databases, and tomorrow's the day I want to get information from my documents or yeah. SharePoint or Confluence yeah. or Wiki. What you really want is that you have problems, and you yeah. want access to the data, wherever they are, as long as you have access to it, Q should be able to provide access to it. So the way that we built Q is to say, yeah. why not use all of the information that companies have indexed and in many yeah. different places, yeah. bring that all there, but also cover both structured as well as unstructured data. But, and add, and be very permissions aware, right? I mean, yeah. organizations have spent a lot of time and energy trying to be able to figure out as to how to be ACL aware, permissions aware for people who have, should have access to the data, should have access, people who shouldn't, mm -hmm. shouldn't. And so when we index all of this data, we get all of it, make sure it's yeah. appropriately permissioned so that the right people have access to it. So if you didn't have access to any of this information outside of Q, you want to have access to it in Q as well. So that's the first part. The second part is that what you really want to be able to do is that not just pose questions and get information, you also want to be able to do analyses, you also want to be able to take yeah. actions. So like converting this from a system of information to a system of action is super important. Yeah. And then the third aspect is that we always sort of talk about this notion of like where do people work mm -hmm. and what's the kind of work to do. You want your assistance to be available where people are doing work. So if you're working in Slack, it should be available there. If you're working in you know, your line of business application, it should be available there. Um, that's the general idea. So if you do those three things, it turns out that people know that they can rely on assistant. People know that they have access to the data that they need and that they have a bevy of actions that they can take to do their day-to-day -day jobs. That's really Yeah, helpful. I mean, I think the product is great. Talk about some of the, the, the data you guys seeing. What I love about Q is Q for developers is one, it helps the coders, but also Q for business is serving some use cases that you guys have done. Talk about some of the um, 
improvements and data points you're getting out of the, out of the yeah. workflow. So like, w w I'll start with the developer okay. use case and then yeah. move there. Like even developers yeah. need access to a lot of documentation. They yeah. have tons of documentation. This documentation is usually buried yeah. in different places. We're seeing that people are saving, they're like posing millions and millions of questions and saving like 4,000 4, hours of mm -hmm. work, just not searching for documents. So it's yeah. just combining Q developer and Q business is providing that benefit. I'll give you some other examples of the kinds of things, some which yeah. you would have normally expected and some atypical even for us. Yeah. Um, so you, most people say that you know customer support or yeah. support use cases are very, very clear places where you can draw on a vast amount of information, index it, so that when queries come in, you know, your users have it. So we have we have companies that are using it for onboarding. Uh, you, there's, you know, Smartsheet has this Slack application where you can do at Ask Me. And what, what tends to happen is that new hires come in, they pose a whole bunch of questions, typically the community answers, but now you have Q Business behind the scenes, which is indexing all the company yeah. docs and being able to provide yeah. answers. So they're getting answers in a fraction yeah. Yeah. of this, like of the time that it used to take. There's companies using it for recruiting yeah. um, and saying that like when, when resumes come in, why don't I sort of pull out the relevant content if this pa if this yeah. person sort of passes the, the types of job descriptions that I'm responsible for, why not send it to the right hiring managers? Yeah. There's a bunch of that automation that is happening, which used to be someone's daily job to yeah. come in and have to do a lot of grunge work. Yeah. So there's like, and, and there's like, the, the interesting examples yeah. would be things like yeah. a manufacturing company used to send out support technicians to factory floors yeah. to be able to take care of their equipment. The problem is that when you have a huge churn in your own support staff, yeah. most of the people going out to service this machinery are not very well equipped with your company's manuals and the yeah. machinery that's out yeah. there. But now that they can have Q business at their fingertips, yeah. It allows them to be able to guide them to be able to fix this. So the difference between an expert <laughs> technician and a new one. We've all been there. It's gone, <laughs> gone I fix lower. my sink, I go to YouTube. Okay, there it's, it's, it is. It's, it's exactly know? right. Like, I mean, yeah. like I was, we just had an electrical problem in our yeah. house and I was like, yeah. oh, how do I change this? How do I do that? Yeah. It's, uh, it's kind of you know, interesting. You're bringing up a great point because, you know, um, I don't want to categorically just say enterprise search, but if you look at data, mm -hmm. people need data to do their jobs. The yes. Data's are in application. So search, concept is to find what you're looking for when you need it contextually mm -hmm. and matching it to the right context. Right? Yes. So that's just search. So search is a killer app here because the value proposition is whether I'm searching for an answer from a developer or, hey, what's the quick, where's that documentation to, hey, I, I want something out of the SQL database, write me some SQL code. Yeah. I mean, this is just the user experience with data. I yes. mean, this is what we're talking about here. Exactly. Search tends to be the low hanging fruit, but yes. search is first and then Integrating that data through discovery. I mean, I guess discovery. I mean, this is how it is, right? I mean, how would you, how do you frame this into a simple, simple concept? Well, even search, if you think about it, you're absolutely right. Search comes in multiple phases, right? Like one is, I know exactly what I wanted. I know when I find the answer, I get the right yeah. answer. It's an authoritative solution that comes in yeah. that's been indexed. But then there's other scenarios where the search is just the starting point. <clears throat> you start yeah. with the search. Uh, you say that, well, I want to be able to figure out what my weekly sales are, or to be able to create a report yeah. for weekly sales, and it produces the weekly sales. Where it turns out that every Monday, you have to go to your boss, yeah. or you have to go to your team and to be able to sort of indicate what your sales operations are doing. So why not create a, why not automate that? And why not build? So we had this concept in Q Business known as a Q app, yeah. which allows you to take conversations or things that you would normally do on a much more repetitive basis, automate it, so that the next day when you come in or the next week when you come in, on Monday morning you come in, you don't have to sort of start yeah. that process of typing it in, you just open the app. The app is updated yeah. with the latest information. You can take that same app now and share it. Yeah. So I can share it with you, I can yeah. share it with somebody else in my team. And now it runs for their, for their customers and their apps. So like yeah. now we've gone from something that I search and I get information yeah. to I then using yeah. that to be able to create applications and that I can then automate and then distribute to a team that they can use. Yeah. And so you, you go very quickly from individual productivity yeah. to team productivity to you know, department productivity. And I think that's where the power truly yeah. comes in. And what's interesting is Gen AI brings us to a whole nother level of intelligence to keep things like closing the discovery loop, which you're talking about there, but also knowing things like concepts like memory, not like memory on a, on a chip, yeah. but like where was I in my work? I'm going to go home now, or exactly. I might be in a different form factor on my mobile device. So you have all this kind of connected tissue yes. with data. Yes. This is the value that we are going down that road 
So as a worker, <clears> it's not just discover the answer. Yeah, I need the answer now to go to the next step. Exactly. And now I'm in a progression. I'm in a workflow. Yeah, like an assistant or a teammate, like it's, it's exactly yeah. the concept of memory, right? They know where they left off. They can pick up from there. Yeah. They have contextual history as to the kinds of things that you've done. Over a period of time, you can see very normally that these things are going to be suggesting and doing work on your behalf rather than you having to initiate it. So how do I set this up? I mean, um, um, and I just kind of think about myself as a use case. So imagine myself, okay, I'm sold on Q for developer. Swami sold me on that. Well, Deepak did a year ago. <laughs> um, I see the value there, development side. On the business side, I can see multitude of benefits. Yes. How do I get started? Do I need to set up a bunch of data? Um, do I usually use the App Studio? Take me through if I'm a customer. You know, yeah, it's actually very, it's, it's actually super simple. Like yeah. it's, it's in, in four steps, four very easy steps, you can just onboard your, your data. Like you can point to what is your unstructured data, you can point to your wikis, you can point to Confluence, you can point to different types of company data that exists. And very simply, the admin can just create an application mm -hmm. and then they can invite users. Who, who need to be onboarded to that application. What tends to happen is that the, one of the benefits that you see is that you can start getting value a from an assistant. A business person can set this up. Uh, right? Like an administrator. Okay. An administrator and a company can okay. set it up. Like it's, it's a very simple process. Mm -hmm. it, all it requires you to know as to what is the content that you're trying to index that you're bringing in. Okay. Uh, you know, what's the user ID password, the credentials necessary for it. And then once that, yeah. then the index and the data comes in. It could be once, S3 buckets. It could be S3 buckets. It could okay. be, it's like we have 40 plus connectors to uh, almost all the popular things. Basically the location of the data. The location of the data and some credentials okay. to be able to like pull that uh, information inside, which yeah. you know few people have. Uh, once that comes in and it's authorized for your users, your users can start getting utility on day one. And the reason for that is that they don't even have to wait for all the data to be indexed because yeah. you can you can people have content on their laptops, yeah. they have files, they have other things that they get. You can start chatting with. Q business to be able to get and summarize content, generate content information right away. And as your company information starts coming in, mm -hmm. it just augments it. So the things that you can end up doing gradually increase over time. You can create Q apps with your company data. You can, you know, you can start taking actions on your company data. You can, um, yeah. you can upload, summarize, and deal with anything that you have. Yeah. That's the benefit of it. So there's the admin related work mm -hmm. to synth you know, index all of your content, yeah. but you don't have to wait for all that content yeah. to be ingested. You can start getting utility right away. Yeah, I mean, I think search is such a low-hanging fruit on this use case. You can start just index everything. Exactly. And then the workflow end-to-end -end seems to be where the agents are going, the agentic systems. Uh -huh. I mean, the hype cycle on agentic is really high right now. Yeah. And, and the reality is kind of going to come down downstream. We see obviously because you got to get the infrastructure and data layers all set up. And what is the what does that pre-agentic wave look like? Um, um, unstructured data, semi-structured data, structured data, all all good to go? Or? I think the, the when, when people talk about agentic information, they're usually talking about things that are autonomous, that can take action on your behalf, yeah. right? And we're already headed in that direction. So you can yeah. start with simple actions that are pretty deterministic. We, we, I just mentioned Q apps. Q apps is a way where you can automate things where something is taking action on your behalf. Mm -hmm. uh, and then over a period of time, what's what the, the continuum that we're seeing is that the complexity of the queries that people are posing yeah. to an assistant is increasing. And the, the ability for the assistant to be able to decompose that into very specific problems mm -hmm. and then have multiple different um, applications or sub-applications or agents, as you will, yeah. handle that and then compose the answer back to the user. Mm -hmm. like, that's definitely headed in that direction. Yeah. I think the key is the orchestration and figuring out how to compose the problem. Okay, I'll talk more about the Q apps, I think that's fascinating. Yeah. So take us through where you are on that. Um, are people building apps today? What are the use cases you see? What are customers telling you? And yeah. how do I build a Q app? Yeah, it's actually, <laughs> it's, it's, it's trivial. So once you have Q business, yeah. let's say that you have a conversation, yeah. You can just type in and say that, you know, we, we talked about like, oh, I have weekly sales and, and like you could just say create a Q app for yeah. my weekly sales um, and do this and it just guides you through the process. Yeah. It's a very simple process. There's no code involved. Mm -hmm. And then you can select different things that you want. Like you can select who you want to send it to, what's the frequency at which you want this to run. There's several, there's a few knobs that you have. You can select, there's eventually mm -hmm. things like, you know, model choice and a variety of other things that like you want certain mm -hmm. things for image generation or certain yeah. things for text. But it's like effectively what tends to happen is that in two or three steps, you can create a pretty powerful app and then this app can then get distributed mm -hmm. to anybody that you want to publish this to. 
uh, and then you have you have a library of apps that are constantly available, so yeah. that any time that you come in to your Q Business Console or the the main place where you're interacting, your assistant, you have access to all the apps that not just you have built, but other people have shared with you as well. What's the, what's the popular areas right now? Is it sales information? Is it some of the basic stuff? What are some it's, of the it's actually across the board. It's super interesting. Yeah. Like in like, and this is where human creativity is. Is yeah. you know, salespeople use it for a lot of sales related tasks. We have HR apps that have been created. We have apps like one of the most popular apps at Amazon is this app called FiWi. You know, we do this whenever whenever we have. It started off with engineers doing correction of errors for yeah. uh, when when you, when they have like issues that, that yeah. happen where you say, well, why did this happen? Why did this happen? Why did this happen? It it turns out that people are actually using it for problem solving yeah. and designing things. So like when they want to interpret a new design or create alternative designs, yeah. they create multiple different versions of it. You have apps being created for uh, resume searches. You have apps being created for interview questions. You have apps being created for operations yeah. related things. There's apps, people have created apps for private pricing agreements someone, that they have. I saw someone create an app for answering the interview questions. <laughs> <laughs> give me a question, give me a minute to think about that and then they, they read the answer, they get hired. That's, that's kind um, of interesting. It's kind of a, a, a funny a meme going around on that. But that brings the point that now the data is going to accelerate things, answers and, and discovery. Exactly. Um, I want to ask you about Salesforce and other integrations. You mentioned sales, is Salesforce um, Partnering with you on this, or what's sales? Because um, I, I, you know, connecting to sales data is. We have we have connections in Salesforce. Like one of our internal um, applications that we've sort of built, uh, the sales team built. It's uh, it's called Field Advisor. Field Advisor is sort of uses Salesforce data and it uses QBusiness together in order to be able to answer yeah. the queries that you want. Salesforce, and this is again a yeah. perfect example of yeah. uh, salespeople have access to a certain amount yeah. of information in Salesforce, but you also want to be able to do something with that information. Mm -hmm. You want to be able to create an email for your account, for an yeah. upcoming account that you're preparing or a meeting, customer meeting you're preparing for, or you want some information about some historical trends so on your customers. you can connect today with Salesforce. Yeah, we can sort of connect to it. Salesforce, you can sort of ingest that data, QBusiness can sort of okay. front, several elements of it. Yep. This is the key to this connected ecosystem that's developed. I'm calling it kind of not just API connectors, but like actually data going back and forth between systems. Exactly, um, that, that is exactly what people want, right? Like what do you want to be able to do is to say that yeah. I want access to the data that I have, I want to be able to take actions, and those actions need to can go and write information yeah. in systems that I'm connected to. So you have connectors and you have actions, and, and from a user's perspective, yeah they shouldn't have to deal with the muck of having to figure out all of that. There should be something that sort of abstracts that away, which what, is what QBusiness does. What's your partner strategy um, to roll this out? Because Q for Business is clearly going to be um, the layer for interfacing to the business, making it essentially business as code. I mean, yeah. infrastructure as code was great, but yeah. that brought DevOps, now you have business as code. Yeah. One, one of the things that we have seen in almost everything that we have done is like when I said that there were like yeah. three things, the idea was that data has gravity, so it's very important yeah. that we sort of get to the data. It turns out that a lot of companies have the data in AWS, so it's very helpful. We also have the largest ISVs also in AWS. And so our strategy with Q Business has always been that like, we want to be where people are doing their work. So if you're in an ISV application, the presence of Q Business indexing the data should help. Yeah. your presence in that ISV application. If you're using a line of business application, it should be applicable there. So our our approach has always been to be able to figure out yeah. as to how is it that you can get utility to our customers, yeah. no matter where they are working, but also indexing all the data that they find that is relevant to them with the right permissions. So it's a, it, it, it actually works in both ways because ISVs get the benefit out of it, the company gets the benefit out of it, and employees or their customers win. Yeah, I mean, I was talking with Swami and joking, like with all those cube transcripts on S3, every single cube interview since 2012. Yeah, just point Q developer at it, Q business, and I could have cube apps. Yeah, I mean, that's technically that's, possible. They're all on S3. It's 100 percent possible. I mean, it's, we, it's totally doable. Talk about the magnitude of of the of this inflection point. I mean, you've seen pre Gen AI. You know how hard it is to do these workflows. I mean. The old, the old days, old days five years ago, 10 years ago, you'd have to have a big project plan if you want to integrate and create a system, mm -hmm. an application on top of these enterprise workloads. It's complicated. The enterprise has all these knobs and buttons to, yep. to pull. It's not just throw AI at the problem. You can't just throw AI at the enterprise. You got to have, what's the identity of this database? It's all like, there's all these like buttons and knobs that people know about, yep. but you can't just have a machine learn it. Yeah. And to now, the old way and new way, scope the, 
Order of magnitude step function change. I, I, I think it's monumentally different, like yeah. like from the old way of the, versus the new way on several dimensions. One, I think administrators are sort of realizing that they have a lot of control uh, on the way that they want to be able to construct and ingest this data. It's making it a lot easier for them. We're also introducing an entirely new class of people. There's yeah. making people efficient in the way they work, and then there is finding new ways of doing things. So what's happening is that you're taking 80% of the things that people used to do, and yeah. you're saying that we can actually do it in a much more efficient and a much shorter period yeah. of time. And that 20% of things that you used to do that is really valuable, you can make that 10x better. We're actually seeing productivity yeah. gains happening as a result of both of those things happening, yeah. which I think is reasonably unprecedented yeah. uh, when you sort of look at several of the shifts in computing that have happened over a period of time, which is what is, yeah. is interesting. And like a lot of this was yeah. originally text-based. It's yeah. going to other modalities. The complexity of the types of things that people yeah. are asking is increasing, so it's a, it's, it's a golden age. Productivity is the killer app. You know, one observation I'll share with you, and I've talked about this on the QPod a little bit, but the, the word harmonization is interesting because you're harmonizing data across different data sets and understand that with Gen AI, but one little you know, behavioral change I've seen in, in companies that have done this right with QBiz and have this mindset is that there's more morale's better because the, the developers and the business people, there's no, the conflict goes away when someone can just write their own SQL query by saying, hey, I want yeah. access to this data. The person has not to do that rock fetch, mundane work, exactly. oh, they want another request from the business person, or I'm not almost simplifying it, but the, the relationship, people are collaborating differently. Yes. The psychology of the interactions are different. So you're seeing more harmony yes. in the roles of people. I, mean, I like that phrase, like it's, it's, it's kind of interesting. They were always on the same team, yeah. but pitted in some shape or form. There's always conflict, oh response. yeah, it's a grind. But it's now they're sort of like rolling it's friction. in the same direction. Friction, and friction goes away and that makes people happier. Totally. I mean, that's a productivity benefit. It's funny, I was talking to Swami about uh, you know, the benefits of uh, Q and developer and, and one developer told me, uh, when, with Jenny, he's like, I have more beer time. And so he wants to <laughs> hang out with his friends. What yeah. he means is I don't have to spend all that time doing things. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I think it's exactly what I said. It's like if, when you remove a lot of that undifferentiated yeah. heavy lifting, and a lot of yeah. the undifferentiated heavy lifting on the business side yeah. was in collecting the data yeah. and like getting the data or having access to the data. It was less time was spending. Like they would trade yeah. spending more time on more thoughtful analysis any yeah. day of the week yeah. if they could. And this is allowing them to do that. And it's allowing people to have agency yeah. and a little more control mm -hmm. over how they spend their time, which I think is incredibly liberating and yeah. harmonizing. You know, I was talking on the QPOP with Dave Vellante on this, and I said, you know, um, the business people of the new IT, in quotes, and he goes, what do you mean? I go, well, IT used to be serving the business. They would provision yeah. the desktop to your, to your cubicle and get you access to all the databases. They, they were there to bring technology to serve the yeah. business, and then technology became the business. Right. Now the business people that know the workflows are serving the business through yes. their knowledge. Yes. And so they become kind of like the new IT value because yeah. they're using technology better. Right. They're not just consuming technology, they're using it. Exactly. And they're productive with it. Right, and I think it's like, it's the notion of like English becoming the, the, you know, the, the coding language of the, yeah. the future, like if you can sort of describe <laughs> the kinds of things that you want. The ability yeah. to be able to do those kinds of things is super. And per like, personalization, like having memory in your workflows, it's just, a, exactly. I mean, it's, a, it's a mind blowing. It is. <laughs> it is it's, a good, it's a good time to be alive. Yeah, so. it's great to be here yeah. in the Amazon Studios dealer. Thanks yep. to have, Thank you so much for coming having me. On. Yeah. Okay, this is theCUBE coverage here in Seattle at the headquarters of AWS in the building that's actually called reInvent. I'm John Furrier, the host of theCUBE. Thanks for watching.